you're not willing to believe it, there's no salvation for I, I believe, but like some words... My friends, we have a little message from the Bible. We're giving away free Bibles today. If anyone like, would like a free Bible, you can come up and take a Bible and we're preaching from the same Bible. Everything we say, we base it off the Bible. That's what we do in the preaching of the Gospel. We're not preaching our own message. We are not preaching our own political opinion. We are simply preaching what we find these in this book, Christ, what we find in the Bible, God's Word, that's what we're preaching. And I'm going to read a simple verse that's found in the New Testament of the Bible. In 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 21, it says, For he hath made him to be sin for us, who knew no sin, that's referring to the Lord Jesus, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Now when you come to the Bible, you'll find two things, two things that are absolutely separate in category. You'll find the sin of mankind, and you'll find the righteousness of God. You'll find how mankind is on one side, is in their own area, and that area is apart from God. You'll find that mankind is separated from God as a result of our sin. You will die in your You'll find that mankind is at a great distance from God. We don't have a relationship with God at birth. People will say, I'm a, I'm a Christian from birth. I've always been a Christian. That doesn't make any sense. You can't always be a Christian because when you're born into the world, you're born at enmity with God. You're not in a relationship with God. You haven't put your faith in Him. We're sinners. People baptize babies at birth and they say they are now saved. That doesn't make any sense at all from the Bible. There is no support from the Bible for salvation at birth. The salvation that you read of in the Bible takes place when someone puts their faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. When they put their faith in the sinless one that died at Calvary. And that is sinners that's all we can do that is the only way of salvation for someone who is born in sin there is no way of salvation in my my own ability in my own work in my own baptism in my own religion a lifetime of good works won't get you an inch closer to heaven and that needs to be understood we're not preaching religion today we're just bringing to you what the Bible says in obedience to the commandment of the Lord Jesus to go into all the world and preach the gospel. That's what we're doing today, is preaching the glad message of the gospel. It's preaching how you can be saved from your sin. That same problem, the great problem that every human being faces, the problem of your sin, the problem of your sin that takes you down to that place called hell, the reason the Lord Jesus came into the world. That shows the the, the magnitude of the problem. Because if the Lord Jesus didn't have to leave heaven, he wouldn't have. The Lord Jesus came all the way from heaven. He went to the cross and he suffered for my sin and he suffered for your sin because it was necessary. He suffered because you could not suffer to take away your own sin. You could not pay the price for your own sin to get to heaven. The only person that could pay your penalty, the penalty that you've amounted against God, the only one that could pay that great price was the Lord Jesus. So when the Lord Jesus Christ came to this earth, when he died on the cross, he was paying that price. He was doing what I couldn't do, and he was doing what you cannot do. Because we are sinners. We have nothing at all that we can offer before God. And if you look to that verse, you'll read of the one who was made sin for us. That's in 2 Corinthians. He was made sin for us. Who knew no sin? That we might be made the righteousness of God in Him. So what you read of in this verse, is you read of the Lord Jesus, the one who was sinless coming down to this earth and he was made sin what does that mean 
when it says that the Lord Jesus Christ was made sin for us. We can understand this when we look at other verses in the Bible. Made sin, he was made sin for a purpose. And that purpose was that so we could be free from our sin. There's a verse in the book of John, John's Gospel, chapter 8 and verse 36. It says, if the Son therefore shall make you free, you will be free indeed. The Lord Jesus Christ, when he died on the cross, he died for the purpose that you could be free from your sin. I'm here preaching today. When I'm preaching here today, I can't get you any closer to heaven. I can't get you one inch closer to heaven. All I can do is show you, tell you, how you can get closer to heaven. And that's through the Lord Jesus Christ. If you look to that verse again, you can look at sin all day long. You can look to the fallen nature of mankind. But when you face the problem of sin, the Bible always points us to the one. The Bible points us to God. The Bible points us to the one that can take away our problem of sin. And the only one that can take our problem of sin and can get rid of it is God. Religion takes the problem of sin and makes profit off it. They make money. That's what they do. That's the reality of religion. It's a business in many, in many ways. But when you come to God, you face one that is righteous in contrast to us. We are sinners, but God is righteous. That means that the one, the only one that can take away my sin is God. He's the only one. And the Lord Jesus Christ must, you must understand that the Lord Jesus Christ as God's son is 100% God. He was 100, he is 100% divine. And therefore, he was the one the perfect one. The Bible speaks of him as the Lamb of God, the sacrificial Lamb, the one sent from God to take the sin of mankind and to give his own life as a sacrifice so that we could have forgiveness of sins. The Bible points us to this one that was made sin for us that day, the Lord Jesus Christ. Why? So that we could be made so righteous. Is a picture. Look at Joseph. That's the Joseph whole reason that the Lord Jesus came to this world. It's so we could Jesus be made right in the sight of God. Yes. And when the Bible speaks of righteousness Joseph in connection to mankind, it's either referring to false righteousness. Was when, I, when I puff myself up, when I do good works, and I say that's going to get me to heaven, the, the Bible says that that the in the sight of God is nothing more than filthy rags. But there's another righteousness you can read of in the Bible. But you must understand that that righteousness is not mine by my own work, but that that righteousness is mine as a result of the Lord Jesus Christ and what he did for me at Calvary. And this simple gift, this way of salvation, is made available through faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. It's made available through putting your faith in the sacrifice of the Lord Jesus Christ at Calvary. And if you trust him today, you can be saved. You can see the truth. No, his was different.